let's kick it off. Um, let's start with the code of conduct. So the code of conduct says be aware of others, be welcoming and respectful, be friendly and patient, be open to all questions and viewpoints, be understanding of differences and be kind and considerate to others. Uh, you can find a link to a full code of co conduct on the link shown at your screens. Also, a uh, couple of organizations wanted to, to actually donate, and since this is a, there are no costs to cover, all the donations were, were directed to the National Museum of Computing. Uh, your donation is more than welcome. You can find a link at your screens as well. And finally, some of the sponsors you can see on this page. Um, we are pretty thankful for them for supporting this, this, this presentation and this event in general. And finally, make it social, tweet about it. And uh, yeah, let's kick it off. Now, it's it's actually funny, you know. I've been uh, I've been doing grip therapy, like rational emotional behavior therapy, for uh, well over seven years now. You know, like worked on literally a bunch of problems, uh, solved numerous issues, like at least tackled like infinite number of things, like kind of unimaginable, you know. But funny enough, <laughs> to this day, and I kid you not. To this day, every time I do something that uh, my girlfriend or my my friends or my parents dislike, it's it's like every time they use this as a weapon against me, they would be like, "That therapy isn't helping you at all, is it?" You know, <laughs> like, I, I mean, for one, it actually frustrates me because it, it's 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 not like a therapy is a silver bullet, you know, or a or a pill that you can swallow that so, so, which would automatically resolve all of your problems, you know. And um, for two, actually, it kind of amuses me, you know, because it kind of shows me that there is this huge gap uh, in, in, in a lack of knowledge. And uh, I kind of see myself as somebody trying to narrow that gap. And um, with that in mind, I'm Mikhailo, and I'll be happy to talk today why we as developers would need some more therapy, you know. Now, before I actually jump into like uh, why therapy or uh, some of the lessons that I learned or anything like that. Uh, I'd actually like to, to share a story with you and uh, not just any kind of story, not just story for the sake of storytelling, you know. Uh, I'd actually like to share a story because my belief is that uh, so many of us, especially developers, are kind of going through through some of the similar issues, frustrations, anxieties, you know, like experiencing kind of the similar set of feelings, you know, and yet we kind of tend to, to keep them to ourselves, you know, we don't go around sharing our like, yeah, I'm scared of this or I'm frustrated by that or that makes me anxious, you know, we keep it for ourselves and by keeping it to ourselves, we, we kind of, and because obviously others are keeping it to, to, to themselves, we kind of feel isolated and we think that we are the only ones having those issues or problems or whatever. And uh, the reason why I want to share this story is to show you that you're probably not alone. What I went through is probably at least to some point that you might be going through, right? like like in the past or now or in the future. And what I'm hoping is that by seeing how I actually tackled some of the issues, it might, well, I hope it might inspire you to, 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 to find your own ways to, to deal with those things. Now, I have to warn you, actually, I mean, the, the way the story unfolds is like perfectly represented by this image, you know, so it's it's not like like a happy ending story. I mean, like it it has a happy path, but uh, it still doesn't have an ending, but uh, it's it's like this picture perfectly depicts it, you know, so. The story begins probably around 10 years or so like give or take 9, 10, 11 years. I don't really know. I was already like a senior developer at the time. I think I was also a team lead. Had qu quite some responsibilities, honestly. And yet, on the other hand, I was quite young. I was like in my early 20s, you know. And I was also like, like super energetic, you know, wanted to be one of the best, you know, like investing long hours, what else, whatever. And you know, one funny thing that that not many of us realize is that so many of us, especially developers, are actually either perfectionists 
or we have some perfectionist traits. And you might think this is a good thing, but it's actually not a good thing. It, it kind of can harm you if, if left uncontrolled, you know. And uh, if you have doubts, I'll actually give you a quick self-test to, to, to check if you have some perfectionist traits. So just think and answer to yourself, to yourself obviously, or even better, paste it to a Discord channel. Uh, have you ever, ever in your career, wrote a piece of code that was perfect for the case? You know, it perfectly sol solved the problem, it was done on time, whatever, and yet you decided to rewrite it because you didn't like it. Or even if, if you even kept doing it over and over. Right? If that ever happened to you, and uh, I'm quite sure that, that there will be a couple of people that might identify, I'm sorry to inform you that uh, you probably have perfectionist traits, you know, so uh, kind of kind of would be good to, to find a way to deal with them. So anyway, obviously I was energetic, high achiever, perfectionist, and yet inexperienced, you know, like when you are in your early 20s and, uh, you know, like with high energy, not many people actually tell you how, how to navigate the, the, the seas, you know. So I was investing long hours before, for one, actually, I love programming and uh, I always loved programming. So, so, so I was investing long hours because for one, I loved it, and for two, I wanted to be good, you know. And uh, what I didn't know at the time, and I honestly hope that either you know or you learn it now, is that um, there comes a point of diminishing returns. So it's, like, it's like the more time you invest, usually you get the, the more results you get. But at one point, it actually, you know, like the more time you invest, actually the results start plummeting down, you know. And... Uh, what, what I mean, what, what I didn't know is that uh, that such thing exists, obviously. So I it, it made me frustrated. It made me pissed. I wanted to be good, not bad. So I started investing even more hours on top of that. And instead of getting results, I was getting even shittier results, you know. So, so um, I started being frustrated. I started being pissed. You know, I was working long hours and instead of feeling good about it, I was actually feeling more and more bad, you know, more and more angry, you know, and, um, you know, as, as, as every good developer probably knows, well, I hope, you know, is that there is this concept of, of technical debt, right? It's like, if you're writing a code, you're creating technical debt, right? And the more code you write, the more tech debt you accumulate, right? Well, what you as a good developer are probably or hopefully doing is you're scheduling a regular maintenance of your tech debt, right? Because if you keep your code base, if you keep this tech debt accumulating, uh, it actually tends to make, eventually makes your code base unmaintainable, right? What I didn't know at the time due to obviously lack of experience and no, no guidance at all, is that uh, there is such a thing as a mental debt as well. And this is really tricky because um, some of the manifestations of mental debt are actually frustration, uh, thinking that your boss is a dick, uh, thinking that your organization is a perfect example of a lack of organization, uh, your management is making stupid decisions, if they only listen to you, everything would be better. You know, these kinds of things. Like, you strongly believe that the problem is in everyone else, but you never stop and think about yourself, right? These are some of the traits of mental depth. And uh, one problematic thing is that uh, if you keep accumulating this, mental depth just like a tech depth it will eventually overflow and make your mind unmaintainable so obviously being young energetic you know like, like no no serious commitments except for work you know and a girlfriend at the time i kept pushing and accumulating this mental depth and it actually i mean it, it kind of gives gives me goosebumps i'm not sure if you can see on the camera but but every time i talk about it i get get goosebumps goosebumps before I, because I get to relive this experience, you know, it became so bad that I literally woke up one morning. Obviously, this was like, like 10 years ago or so before COVID. We, we, we used to go to the office. I woke up this morning, and, uh, one morning, not this morning, and uh, I literally, literally felt physically sick by a sheer thought of going to the office. I kid you not, like, like I had this vomit reflex. I had a pain in my chest. I mean, it's, it's a, just by a sheer thought of having to go to the office to see one to see my boss for one more day, to talk to my colleagues, to resolve incidents. It was it was making me nauseous. You know, I, I'm like, 
it's 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 just an awful feeling and if you never felt that i i honestly hope you, you never will get to relieve that because it's it's just it's, it's just an overall bad place to be in you know so um obviously i had to go because i was kind of making my living from that job so i kept doing it i kept accumulating more and more mental depth but uh it became so bad that obviously i couldn't do it anymore uh i quit my job uh, I also happened to break up with my long-term girlfriend. Uh, I, I kind of believe that, uh, you know, this is all shit and, and this is not what I should be doing with my life. You know, I should be living La Vida Loca, whatever. So I quit pretty much everything that I could quit. And uh, what I didn't know at the time, because I don't even think it was that popular at the time, but uh, today we have a perfect name for this, right? It's called uh, Burnout. I burned out so bad. And I, I don't even, I'm not even kidding when I'm telling you this. I burned out so bad that I couldn't even go near the office. Like, like one kilometer radius would be like no go because just by thinking of the office or, or moving near the office would literally make me want to vomit. I never really vomited, but uh, that, that's how it was making me. It's just making me physically sick. So I obviously avoided it. And, uh, one funny thing about getting rid of stuff is that even though sometimes those things are not the root, root cause of your problem, kind of just by getting rid of them, you kind of get this temporary satisfaction and temporary hype, whatever. So I started partying, you know, because obviously I broke up. I, I got rid of all everything that, that I had going on in my life. I started partying heavy, started drinking. I bought a motorcycle like I never drove a motorcycle in my life, but I decided it's a good idea to buy a motorcycle, you know started you know uh, like living la vida loca whatever and that was actually working good for a while like like a couple of months maybe i was i was kind of saying around i, I was wearing some some really crazy hat because i was reading some crazy book about uh what was it uh, like like pickup artists or whatever you know i was wearing some super huge hat because i wanted to be seen whatever i mean <laughs> As I, as I said, th this kind of worked for a while, but eventually I came to a point, and this is really, again, really bad, one of really bad points in my life. I kept to a point, I get, got to a point where uh, I would wake up in the morning and I would be like super hyped, like, yeah, let's rock the day, let's do it, you know, like everything. And then by the afternoon time, I would be like, like my mood would completely plummet. Like I would be like completely depressed, like, uh, everything is shit and uh why am i even doing this what's the point why did i break up why did i quit my job maybe i made a mistake you know and then by the night time my mood would go up like rock it up again i would be like yeah let's rock the night whatever and i kept doing this over and over for maybe a month a couple more months maybe but you know one good thing about having really close friends is that they know you <laughs> i can they know your like base state and uh i had this friend of mine uh one of one of the two best friends that i have and he kind of noticed that something was off you know and uh he, he tried approaching me a couple of occasions but it didn't work out but at this one occasion I, I just think he saw that it's really getting bad i'm getting really out of control you know at one point i actually crashed my motorcycle as well so i was like i had my hand in a cast um so he approached me and he was like do you know, Mixa, like, like, would you actually maybe consider talking to, to somebody, to talking to, to a therapist or something? And uh, here's really funny things. So, so I've known this guy for 10 years, 15 years. I don't know, like since the day one of high school, he, he has been my best friend. Uh, one of two, one of my two best friends, actually. And uh, I had like we've shared everything. Uh, every up and down and whatever and i had no freaking idea that this guy was actually seeing a therapist for a year so he had a nasty breakup and he was seeing a therapist and i had no idea about it and that just tells you how tabooish this subject is you know like my best friend not wanting to talk about it to to his best friend you know so he mentions it and um i kind of immediately give, give him a, every bookcase example of why i want to do it you know like uh i'm not crazy you should be i should be dealing with my problems on my own uh i should first sort out my thoughts and then call, talk to somebody i wouldn't even know how to begin there is so much shit that this guy would kick me out you know like every stupid example i gave what i didn't know 
And this is something I'm hoping you will take out of this lesson. Uh, what I didn't know is that our minds are actually wired, like evolutionary wired, to, to react to every unknown situation with a danger sign, like literally. Like whenever you are facing something that is unknown uh, or something that you never experienced or whatever, your mind will completely go into this panic mode. For some people, like on a higher scale, like myself, for some people on a bit lower scale, but you will feel afraid, you know, and your mind will try generating every possible reason why you shouldn't be doing that, whatever it is, you know, and before you think this is stupid, this is actually not stupid at all, because if you think like, like for most of our human history, it actually made a lot of sense, like seriously made a lot of sense, because just imagine walking to the to, to to the woods or whatever and seeing an unknown path that goes up to a mountain that nobody ever walked before, right? Just following that path had a high chance, high probability that it would actually actually would kill you, you know? So, so it's not like it's not a bullshit thing. It's actually for most of the history, the unknown things would actually kill you, seriously kill you or have had a, had a serious opportunity to harm you, you know? The only problem is that lately in the past, I don't know, maybe thousand years or whatever, 500 years, the times have actually changed. There is a very low possibility that, that an unknown thing would actually kill you, at least in your surrounding. And yet, our brains are kind of slow to evolve. So they are kind of still stuck in that old era where, uh, where the unknown would actually kill you. So, so, so that that's why it's the natural reaction of yourself is a danger, right? Now, what I also didn't know at the time is what my therapist will tell me later is that uh, it usually, and this is funny, it usually takes eleven months from the moment you hear about the concept of the therapy, like somebody suggesting it or maybe you thinking about it, to the moment that you actually start doing it. You know, so. I know this might sound awful, but but if you are if somebody ever mentioned it to you and you're still thinking about it and yet you're you didn't do it yet, you're just statistics. I mean, like I'm sorry, but you just are that that high part of the bell curve, you know, like I'm sorry, but it's just a fact, you know, so um, obviously I kept living my La Vida Loca for a while, but uh, it came to a point that uh, I literally I was literally sitting and thinking like I couldn't take this for a single one more day. Like if I had this awful mood swing for one more day, I would either go crazy or I mean, maybe I was crazy already or I will, I don't know, like do something bad, you know. So so I decided to actually give a shot to this therapist guy, whatever. Now, as you could imagine, just by a sheer thought of giving a call to the therapist, like like my heart started racing, I started sweating, I was having a mini mini full-blown panic attack, you know, mini panic attack, whatever. Because it's it, it was just an unknown, like, what would I say? What, what what would his voice sound like? There were all these what's, all, it was this huge unknown to me. And since when, when you have a huge unknown, everything is in game, like, right? I mean, like, it's just one big danger. So, yet I decided to give him a call. And what I didn't know, and this is really funny, what I didn't know is that these guys are actually trained to take those first calls. They're like trained to take the first call and, and calm you down immediately. You know, like it's, it's part of the training for being a therapist, I think. So I give him a call. He calms me down immediately. We schedule a meeting for like, I don't know, was it like uh, a week or a month? I don't even remember. It was like seven plus years ago. So we schedule a meeting. I'm like, OK, cool. It's, it's not as bad as, as I assumed. So the day comes. And Jesus Christ, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I'm like on the verge of giving up. Like, like, why am I doing this? I'm not crazy. Am I crazy? I'm not crazy. I hope I'm not crazy. Like, like I'm questioning myself. I'm questioning my decisions. I'm sweating. I'm shivering. I mean, on one hand, I committed. I promised to a guy that I will come. On the other hand, like, like it's the last thing that I want to do. Like, maybe I should call it quits, whatever. But I do it, you know. So, so I'm walking to his office. It was a sunny day, actually, like I was sweating, which is good that, that uh, it, it was sunny because like if it was winter and I was sweating, it was really look bad, you know, so it's good that I was sweating <laughs> um, and I'm having these crazy thoughts like. 
how does his office look like? You know, like, is there some crazy kind of couch where I need to lay down? And uh, is he some weird looking, small, fat, bearded guy with some weird glasses? And I mean, everything was in game, right? I had, it's not like you're thought in your elementary school how to go to a, to a therapist or whatever. Like, you have no idea, you know? Um, so I go there and I'm expecting everything. <laughs> But what I didn't expect is actually a guy in his, I don't know, it was probably late 30s at the time, like short hair, short beard, my height, uh, wearing a, just a regular t-shirt, uh, jeans, Converse sneakers. And he shows me in, and, and his office is not even an office, it's actually a small flat, like there is a kitchenette on the left hand side, there is a computer table with a computer in front, there is a couch, but just your regular TV couch. Uh, there is a TV in front uh, table, just like a normal small flat, you know. So I'm like, OK, so he sits me down. He offers me a coffee. I take a black one, you know, and um, so he goes like, OK, Mikhail, so what do you want to talk about? Like, why did you come, you know? And uh, I actually kind of prepared for this. So I was like, well, you know, uh, I've been having these awful mood swings. Uh, I broke up with my girlfriend. I quit my job. I crashed my motorcycle because my hand was like casted all the way up. Uh, like I have all these crazy things going and I actually thought that I just came to solve this like mood swing problem, whatever. And <laughs> what you what you need to realize it, at, at, at this point is that uh, I've been for years, I mean, I, and for the last couple of months at the time extensively, I was in so much pain that, that, that you just couldn't, I, if you've never felt that, I, I sincerely hope you never will feel that. It was so much, so so painful just going day by day that, you know, like I was questioning my existence on, on this planet, you know, like, like why am I even doing this if it's so painful, you know? And I clearly remember the moment uh, where I tell him all this, you know, being in all this pain, whatever, and he's like, you know, Mikhailo, uh, if I kept this table in front of you for like six years and then all of a sudden I moved it, you would probably try putting your cup on it. It would fall down and break and you would be frustrated and anxious and pissed and whatever. So why the hell are you questioning? Like, why, why are you feeling like that? Because it's absolutely normal to feel like that, you know, and just like that. And I kid you not, just like that, he literally swiped away everything that I was feeling for months, years, whatever. He actually gave it a meaning, you know, that, like he, he made it normal. Like how you're feeling is actually absolutely how you should be feeling, you know? And uh, this is exactly what I'm hoping that you will take from this lesson, which is a lesson number one that I learned. And uh, that is that going to a therapy, if for nothing else, but for getting a fresh perspective is absolutely worth it. Because it's like when you're feeling down or depressed or whatever, you kind of feel stuck, you know, and you, you feel like in a box and you just see through this small loophole. It, it's you only have one point of view, you know, and uh, these guys, therapists are actually trained to give you a separate view, like a fresh perspective or whatever. And just by giving you a fresh perspective, you actually kind of start processing it differently and you start seeing another solution, you know. And um, I've heard this so many times. So, so, so I mean, like, yeah, but we can do it with friends. We can do it with family, with partner, blah, blah. No, you, just no. I mean, I won't even elaborate. No, your friends, your family, whatever, you, your close circle of people is biased, period. They are biased. They know you. They share your feelings, your emotions, whatever. And whether you want it or not, they are actually thinking most of the same things that you are. And they can't be objective. And yet the therapists, they are actually trained for this. They are trained to be like unbiased and they kind of start with a clean slate because they just meet you, you know. So going there to the therapy just for the sake of getting a fresh perspective would be worth enough. But like if for nothing else for that, trust me, just do it. Lesson number two, um, which is something that seven years later, and I'm still not on complete terms with it, but I'm trying to get there, is that uh, it's actually OK to feel down, you know, which is which is kind of funny because my whole life I always assumed that uh, if something is good for you, you should be feeling good, you know, uh, 
if relationship is good, you should be feeling good and happy and excited all the time. If uh, your job is good, you should be feeling like happy and excited all the time. You know, if your life is good, you should be obviously happy, feeling happy and excited all the time, right? And yet this guy comes and he tells me that it's actually okay to feel down. And I'm like, what the actual fuck, you know? Like, like what does this even mean, you know? So what he actually explained me and what I'm happy to share with you is that uh, just imagine a guy who, I'll uh, imagine he lost his job, he broke up with his partner, his kids leave him, whatever, his house burns down, whatever. I mean, like all the crazy shit happens to him. If this person, wasn't feeling down at that moment or depressed or suicidal even, you would probably say that something is either wrong with his brain chemistry, right? With their brain chemistry, or they would be like, they, they, they are probably being ignorant and not processing what is happening to them, which which would be even worse than, than just being feeling down in the moment. So by actually being able to feel down about something or depressed or, or pissed or whatever, you should actually be happy because that means that your brain chemistry is like in line. It's actually working as it should be working. So you should be feeling grateful about it. Now, what I'm not saying is, I'm not saying that you should be feeling bad or depressed all the time, because if you are, you, should, you probably should seek some professional assistance, you know, but if you're occasionally feeling down, it's absolutely, it, you should be grateful for it. Let's put it that way. Now, lesson number three, which is also something that I kind of find weird, is uh, that real life is never black and white. You know, now, before you say like, well, it's true, right? Well, I, I, I kind of disagree and uh, I will tell you what I told my therapist. So here's the thing. So as developers, for most of the time, we are kind of engaged in black and white things. Like either the thing works or it doesn't. It's either one or zero, you know, works or doesn't work. And don't even get me started with works on my local, but doesn't work in production. It's like it's one for your local and zero for production, you know? So, so it's like it's always one or, or zero. So just take a person who's like for at least eight hours a day exposed to a binary like works or not and tell them that, well, you know, the real life doesn't really function like that. I was like, what? Wait, what? I mean, how? Even if you don't acknowledge it, it, it it's, it's what you're used to, right? Now, here is something that I was being, that, that, that I was taught and something that I want to share with you. Next time, when you are faced with something that, uh, that is unknown to you, that uh, you are questioning, that you're anxious about, let's say, let's say, let's say, for example, let's say that you're thinking about changing your job, right? Okay. Your first thought might be, well, do I really want to do it? Uh, I like, I'm feeling good here. Uh, maybe if I change my job, uh, my imposter syndrome might be re revealed or I, I might realize that I'm not as good as I hoped and uh, I might lose my job and everything might go to shit, whatever. Perfect. This is your mind working at its best. What I want you to do next is to acknowledge that, okay, what you're feeling at the first moment, at the first thought is like the, the most shittiest thing like that you can feel. It's the black, you know, but what I want you to acknowledge is that there is a line. Actually, it's not black or white. It's a line, actually. So how you are feeling is the far left of the line. It's the black. So you acknowledge, OK, how am I feeling now is the worst case scenario. What I want you to do next is to come up with a best case scenario. So what would be the best case scenario? Well, and this requires some practice, just so you know, because by default, you're going all black most of the time. Well, the best case scenario might be, you know, like th this new job might pay more. I might get promoted. I might like my new colleagues more. The life might become way better in general. You know, a lot of good things are there if you change your job, right? OK, perfect. That's like the best case scenario, the white. Nine out of ten times. And I kid you not, like, like I tested this and give it a shot if you don't trust me. Nine out of 10 times, whatever will happen will be somewhere in the middle, like literally nine out of 10 times. And yes, sometimes it might be the worst case scenario for sure, but sometimes the best case scenario might kick in as well. So, so it kind of cancels out, you know? So this is what I'm really hoping that you will take out of this presentation is this fear facing mechanism framework, whatever you want to call it, like always, as acknowledge you're thinking about the worst case scenario, come up with the best case scenario and whatever will, will happen is somewhere in the middle. And finally, the lesson number four is something that I was quite 
<laughs> like I was quite doubtful about, to be honest. Uh, like he told me that he wants me to write every time something happens, and I was like, why would I write it? And then I actually realized, you know, you're actually spending like an hour, maybe two hours a week with your therapist. And there are so many things going on that you just can't discuss them all, right? And at first I assumed that, well, you know, if something happens and uh, it's if it's important, I would actually remember it and discuss it with him. But if it's not important, I mean, like I can just forget it or whatever. No, he gave me this web form uh, which has like uh, described the situation, described the, the, the who were the, the, the who, who participated in that event, like who were the actors, so to say, how did I feel about it? You know, he wanted me to break down whatever was upsetting me into, you know, like 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 objects or whatever, you know, like situations. So he wanted me to write all of this down and send it to him. And what I actually realized by doing this for the first time, and this is actually pure magic, just by writing the thing down, you're literally getting it out of your head. And not just not, not just that, but by writing down whatever is bothering you, and it can be on a piece of paper, it can be on a word pad, text mail, whatever. I mean, it doesn't even matter. You can throw it away later. But just by writing it down, you're actually engaging your writing skills. You are engaging your like visionary skills, like your vision. You are engaging so many parts of the brain and putting all of them on this same problem that before you were just using your inner voice, you know, like we usually have this inner voice which we fight with, you know, but by writing it down, you actually engage way more brain centers and you usually nine out of 10 times just by writing down the situation, you actually see the solution. Uh, if you don't believe me, give it a shot and you will see the, 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 the magic that happens. All right, so before I proceed, uh, I just give you a moment to appreciate the takeout lessons while I get some quick refreshments in terms of water. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, I was giving this presentation at uh, another conference, and some of the feedback was like, well, you know, everything is perfect, yada, yada, yada. But what we are missing, I mean, this is, I'm paraphrasing, obviously, what we are missing are some real life experiences, right? Like, how did it affect you in the long run? Uh, how did you profit from it? How did you improve? Blah, blah. I was actually thinking about it, and uh, I mean, if you if you stop and really think, it's not really easy to compress seven years of, of something into like a couple of slides, right? I mean, I could obviously be talking to you for 100 days and 100 nights, but I, I doubt that anybody would want to listen to that, right? So I was actually thinking about this, and what I re actually realized, which is really funny, is that what my therapist was doing, is actually doing, this whole time was actually planting the seed. And uh, as any new parent probably knows by, if you want somebody to change a behavior, and if you tell a kid not to do something, most of the time they will actually do the opposite, right? It's the same with your employees, your, your re direct reports, whatever. I mean, yes, you can use your bossy skills to overrule them, but most of the time telling people to do something triggers them to do the ex exact opposite of what they want. But being able to actually plant a seed into somebody's mind is probably as best as close to having superpowers as you can get to. So my therapist, what was my therapist was doing was planting the seed this whole time. You know, uh, one funny instance is that uh, when I started the therapy, I kind of mentioned along the way that I always wanted to get my bachelor of science degree. I had a, like a college degree, but it wasn't like a bachelor. It was like something Serbian like. So a year after I started this therapy, I kind of find myself engaged in the university in my late 20s, like I was 29, I re-engaged. I got my Bachelor of Science degree. I even engaged in Master of Science and by 31, I actually had a master's degree as well in data science. I mean, I was never into data science yet. I became a master of it. Um, I also, and this is really funny, uh, <laughs> I almost got engaged in PhD, but I kind of stopped him at the time. I was like, okay, this, <laughs> this is really enough. Like, like, I see what you're doing, stop it right now. I also was having a, like a lot of problems with relationships. I mean, like I was always in a relationship, but I was always breaking up. You know, I was always looking for the one, whatever, because I always assumed that you should always be happy and excited, whatever. 
Well, lo and behold, I also improved my relationship skills, as I call them. I've been with my girlfriend for a while now. We 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 actually moved in quite recently, uh, and to be honest, we were also discussing having a baby at some point. So that's kind of for somebody who's been breaking up his whole life. That's that's been hard quite a huge leap, you know, from, from where he started. And I, I, I kind of I credit my therapist for this. And finally, one of the perfect examples of how did therapy actually affect you? If you actually remember from the beginning of this talk, I mentioned that I had this burnout. My 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 organization was like the shittiest organization ever. I couldn't even go near my office because I, I did. I was so dis disgusted by it. Well, lo and behold, it was maybe like a couple of years after, but I go back to this same company that I left. I've I've been here for six years now. I've explored some unbelievable career paths, like, like moving from from being an engineer to to actual engineering manager, which was something that I never even anticipated doing. And yeah, we are hiring, by the way. And uh, I'm actually, believe it or not, I'm actually having the time of my life in this shitty company that I couldn't even approach to. So I kind of think this is like, like the, this is one of the highest achievements of, of my therapist, you know, getting me not, not even to go back near the office, but literally going me to go back to the office. And that's actually pretty much it that, uh, that I prepared for you today. And um, let me just close this with, with, uh, with something that I, I think should really be emphasized. You know, when it comes to uh, mental depth, Either you deal with your mental depth or you burn out. It's it's not an if, it's actually a either or. Either you will deal with your mental health, mental hygiene, or you will burn out. And trust me, as somebody who has been through a very nasty burnout, this is absolutely something that you, you should avoid by absolutely any cost ever. And um, with that in mind, I'd like to thank you actually very much for attending this lesson. It was a it was an amazing pleasure to do this. Uh, you can visit my blog where I'm blogging pretty regularly about sometimes about programming, most of the time about life and therapy. Uh, you can find me on Twitter or LinkedIn. And uh, obviously, I will be absolutely happy to take any questions either here or on Discord directly. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Ben, and thank you, everybody. And I uh, hope to see you on Discord. See ya. Bye.